Here's our next new, new big project to work on. This is a K-Craft archtop guitar. It's got a carved mahogany back and a carved spruce top. Not sure how old it is. I think maybe from the 40s. Anyway, it's quite unique both in its looks and in the way the neck is attached to the body. If later on we'll show you the inside. The neck is held on to the body with a giant wing nut. Um, there's actually a label inside telling the owner of the guitar that if they want to change the, the action and the neck angle to loosen the wing nut and tilt the neck one way or another and then tighten the wing nut back up. So the big problem with this particular guitar is because there's no truss rod on it and it's been around a long time, the neck is pretty seriously bowed forward. And what Jeff and I are going to do is put a truss rod in the neck. Um, normally that would be a, a strange thing to do on a guitar where the peg head is so heavily adorned with this beautiful mother of toilet seat. But because the neck is removable, we can put in a truss rod and have the adjustment down at the, the body end of the neck. And if the, if the truss rod needs tweaking, it's pretty simple to pop the neck off, tighten or loosen the rod, and put the neck back on. Really not much different than a lot of the Fender guitars I've worked on where you have to remove the neck to adjust the truss rod. So that's our plan. First thing we're going to do is take off the neck. Oh, I'm going to point out too that these fretboard markers, clay dots I think they are, they're in pretty rough shape so we're going to replace those with some pearl dots. Yeah, and there's a little crack up here that we need to address as uh, well. Yes, right under the, the end of the fretboard. The, the fretboard actually floats. Tip, tip that this way. Sure. So we can see. see, the fretboard is, is just floating over the soundboard here. It really stops being supported at the 14th fret. Anyway, that's the project. Other than that, the guitar is in really good shape. Yeah, we'll probably we'll need to replace the frets, and we're going to need to replace the bindings, or at least we may. Yeah, those are pretty worn. Yeah, in a few spots, so wouldn't hurt. Plus, they're really tiny. These frets, they're like mandolin frets. Okay. All right. Well, let's take off the strings and take off the neck. There's the wing nut on the head block. That's what's holding the neck in place. Well, we thought we would do the easy thing and take care of this crack in the soundboard first. And the more we looked into it, the more we realized that it's not going to be quite as easy as it seemed. Because there's a big block that goes under the fretboard and then it kind of flares out to make a, a brace that goes all the way across. And what we saw when we flipped on our, our uh, scope was the two halves of this crack are not firmly glued to that block anymore. See, here's the crack. Oops. Oh, there it goes. I lost it, sorry. Yeah, no problem. So here's the crack. You can just barely see it. And then if, if we flex either side, you can see it moving off of this reinforcing block. So we're going to have to get a lot of glue on that block, or, well, between the, the soundboard and the block, to try to glue this all back down. So, 
there. You can see it moving quite a bit now. So that's going to take a bit. I think we're going to use yellow glue on this just because it'll give us much longer setup time and give us more time to gush some glue down there where we can't really reach very well. Looks like the fretboard is already separating from the neck a little bit at least along these first couple of frets it's definitely separating so what we're going to try to do is pop the fretboard off without heating it because uh, the glue might be very dry and weak and if we can get away without heating it it'll just save us some time right so there's a crack in the along the middle of the fingerboard I don't know if you can see it so well or not and so that's the reason why I want to start from this end because this bit here seems fairly solid so I'm hoping that by starting on this end I'll have better luck lifting the fingerboard up intact rather than having that crack run the entire length of the, of the instrument and then of course we would have to figure out how to glue the damn thing back together. <laughs> That's right, glue it together. That would be so great. So I'm just going to slip some thin uh, 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 wedges in here like this and like this just to start the run. And then just I really got lucky with that already separating. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be just like the other one we did. Look at that. And there you go. Wow. Not much holding it. Yeah, this won't be a whole section of our video. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is... Does this one have a reinforcement? It sure does. That is a reinforcing rod in it. Well, it's just a stick, isn't it? Is it? No. Well, no, I don't know. We'll kind of take that off. Maybe not. Well, we'll have to pop that off and see what's under there. Okay. Whatever it is wasn't doing any good because the neck is bowed pretty severely. Although, you know, a lot of the bowing that we found in the other instrument we did that is similar to this one was probably the result of the poor adhesion of the fingerboard to the, mm -hmm. to the neck. But... Yeah, I don't know that this is really doing what we wanted it to do. Well, let's take that off and see if there's something metallic under there. All right. I couldn't really see it from the angle where I was standing. Jeff seemed to know right away. But this actually is a metal bar in here. You can see it getting shiny. Um, and it's just kind of covered with rust. So they did try to put a reinforcement in this neck, but whatever it is, it wasn't very strong. Um, it could be, as Jeff said, that the neck was bowing in large part because the fretboard wasn't stuck very firmly to the neck. But if this bar was really doing what it was supposed to do, the neck should not have bowed the way it did. So we're going to take this bar out and put in an adjustable truss rod. You want to do it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I love taking things apart. This bar isn't even glued in. It's just like a compression fit. So no wonder it wasn't doing any good. Right. It didn't have any anchor points. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> well, we can find something to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Sell it for scrap metal. There you go. Getting ready to put some hide glue in that crack that runs most of the length of the fretboard. And before we actually drop the glue in, we're going to heat up the the wood a little bit it supposedly gives you a little bit more assembly time before the glue starts to gel
I didn't point this out, but we put sandpaper along the edges of the fretboard so that when we apply the clamps, they won't slide around as much. Or at least hopefully. Hopefully, they don't. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to wipe off the excess. And now we can clamp. We figured out on our dry clamping test that it was better to clamp from the under or from the top from the top side. All right. Seemed like it kept the there we go. The fingerboard from twisting. Yeah, we don't want to to make any kind of a convex surface here because it would make it really tough to get the fingerboard to glue flat to the neck surface. And right away we found a use for that steel bar that wasn't really reinforcing the neck. Makes a good straight edge to make sure that the fretboard is staying flat. Yeah, good, great. And I'm going to might as well put slip one right in that space there. Yeah, this section right here is the part that floats freely over the soundboard. We want to make sure we've got that right well secured. Let's see what we have on the other side. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, lots of little dots of glue. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, done with that for today. <laughs>